going down Whiskey and cigars all around Cheers, y'all. We are live. It's Smoking and Toast in episode number 206. We are live at the New Potato, which is a wonderful pub in the uh, Houston area. We're on Clinton Street in the Houston area. Um, this is this is one of Ian's favorite places, I, I think, isn't oh, it? Oh, I love this hang. So yeah. first off, the bar itself is tiny. Mm-hmm. Okay, like you walk in and it's a tiny bar, but no one hangs out inside. Like there's a couple seats and things like that uh, on, on under normal circumstances, but this is an outdoor bar. And there's this nice covered area we're sitting here. There's, there's a, a nice when it gets busy. There's through. a second bar right here behind me. Um, there's there's uh, a picnic tables all socially distanced right out front here. Right, you can hang out anywhere over here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six picnic tables right out here. And then there's this whole back patio. He even built a stage back there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's what I can see. Eight picnic tables. I'm sure there's more. But man, you can you could just bring a uh, you could just bring a blanket and, and find a piece of grass back here and, yeah. and hang out. You know, this is a great place. I don't know if they do. They have horseshoes. I know they have cornhole, but uh, I bet we could. I think they do have horseshoes. horseshoes. I bet we could. I bet horseshoes we could bring some steaks. Fun. Horseshoes yeah. is one of those games that the more you drink, the more fun it gets. Except for the guy in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Just like lawn darts. Just like lawn darts. That's right. Uh, so one of the things about the new potato, even though the ball is sm- uh, the bar is small, the um, as you would expect for an Irish themed pub, the uh, the whiskey selection is quite spectacular. Yes, the whiskey and selection. And Ian, is quite you good. brought one in, uh, brought one out from the bar mm. here that I think you want to talk about and pour us a little tasting so of. Do you not? To look and see what they have. And he has, uh, of course, he has. He has a great selection. We've talked about that. Our last show here, we did some of the red dot, the green dot. We did um, a bunch of the Irish whiskeys. We did. Uh, he's got a great selection of those things. And you know, he doesn't have one of those bars like you don't. You don't come in here like uh, like some of the like the, uh, the the whiskey bars where it's just overwhelming looking at the counter. He has a very small selection, but what he has is very well curated and very well done. And um, and he doesn't bring in stuff that's terrible. Like, he just doesn't have room for it. So he'll bring in stuff that sells, and then he'll bring in stuff, stuff that's, that's good. Terrible. Yes. What a great sort of uh, motto to guide your business by. Yeah, I don't have room for the shitty stuff, you know? So I was talking to him earlier, and he mentioned, he goes, these guys are right up the road. This is giant bourbon whiskey, ultra premium, giant bourbon whiskey, handcrafted, small batch, 95 proof. Mm. Now, there's a little bit of a mystery here, though, Ian, because I looked at this label distillery being right up the road, but what does it say on that label? Yeah, so I looked at this label, and on the neck of this bottle... Which is a really interesting looking bottle, too, by the way. Yeah, it's a very cool, like, I want to, like get a genie out of this bottle here so uh but yeah on the neck it says dave pickerel master distiller i right wonder there. what dave's involvement really so he had with some this. involvement with this and this is uh yeah see the 95 and everything like that yeah he had some involvement with this uh apparently because otherwise dave pickerel who has been a guest on the show and unfortunately he was uh, yeah passed away and he was so fun on the show man that was one of our more over-the-top guests, I'd have to say. So we're going to pour out a little bit of this. But anyway, so I thought, you know what, we're going to go in. We've tried a bunch of the high-end stuff. Why don't we try something local and see what happens? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he said it's right up the road. He said these guys are here all the time. Oh. And... Uh, uh, so this is I I love supporting these. So great if we absolutely hate this, he's going to hate us for whiskey. that. Yeah. Not really, <laughs> but uh, I'm telling you right off the nose. Uh, I will tell you uh, right off the nose, it has a little bit of a young smell to it. Um, that's kind of what I'm getting, and that's not necessarily bad. It just in, right. It just is. Here's a here's I'm going to read to you from the uh, from the Wikipedia page. It does oh, you not, found you found something. Dave Pickerel. On. Well, I didn't find any connection to this uh, particular whiskey, but let me read to you. Of course, Dave kind of made his mark, uh, no pun intended, we by being the mark, made yeah. uh, major by being the uh, the be- the big distiller at uh, Maker's Mark for 14 years. While he was there, while he was at Maker's Mark, while he was the master distiller there, this is why the man like he knows what he's doing. Their annual sales increased from 175,000 cases a year oh, yeah. to nearly 1 million a year. 
Jeez. You don't do that unless the juice is good. Yeah, you don't ignore don't that guy. I don't care what your marketing plan is. Yeah. You don't do that unless the juice is good. <laughs> don't don't um, ignore that guy. After he unless left, you're ABM Bevan, then you would fire him. So after he fine. left, <laughs> right, that's exactly <laughs> right. You'd fire him and replace him with somebody and tell him to water down the whiskey. That's what you would do. <laughs> uh, uh, after leaving Maker's Mark, he established a consulting firm. This is Dave Pickerel. Well. Called Oakview Spirits, where he advised over 100 other distilleries you know so i'm uh, wondering if maybe that's where the that could be that could be a large part of it because i you know remember when he was on the show and we'll have to go back and revisit that episode but you can tell that guy loved whiskey like he oh, yeah. loved whiskey and i'm not talking about like i just love to drink whiskey no he loved everything about the whiskey he loved the whole he, he the whole like process of whiskey cake. yes i mean he was he was so into it and he loved when other people were excited about whiskey mm-hmm. like that you could just tell he uh basically it was he was the guy who was just the face of the uh, of the distilling industry. He was called the founding father of the craft distilling movement mm. and the Johnny Appleseed of craft distilling. Oh. He worked with Whistlepig uh, and was part of the group that restored George Washington's distillery oh, yeah. in Mount Vernon, Virginia. And other distilleries he worked with include Watershed Distillery, Copper Fox Distillery, and garrison brothers yes. distillery uh he also uh worked with metallica to release yeah, their remember. blackened american whiskey which i believe was his last creation mm-hmm. so uh if it wasn't there maybe and he was working on now he was talking about that when he came on our show mm-hmm. and there may be something that comes out from whistle pig yet that he had his hand on because he was really i mean he took whistle pig from being a, a completely unknown brand to being one of those whiskeys that's quite frankly probably Sought, overpriced yeah. because of how much demand there is for it. So, um, anyway, uh, he's involved in this. Tell me your thoughts about the giant bourbon whiskey, Ian. Well, it's big, no doubt. Like, you take a sip, you know you're drinking whiskey. It's got um, it's got a slight youngness to the flavor overall. Mm-hmm. And, again, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does lend it to, uh, to giving that whiskey hug up before you even finish the sip. So whiskey you know, hug, it's even more awkward than usual. You know you're drinking whiskey when you're drinking this. But I will tell you, like, I can't stop sipping it. It has a brighter flavor than I was expecting. It's a little yes. more weedy almost and a little more um, a little more open in the flavor. It's not a dark chocolatey whiskey. But almost there's a little cinnamon kind of flavor in there and a couple of... Uh, couple of other things that I'm pulling out and mm-hmm. I'm also smoking a cigar and uh, a cigar a, a pipe with this so that might be influencing my uh, palate just a bit that's as possible, well yes. but there's a there's a great underlying sweetness to this that's kind of like a like what do we have a graham cracker uh, in that uh, earlier in that first one, beer that yeah crust or that kind of that kind of almost brown sugar but not real heavy brown sugar right, going right. on in it I'll tell you Ian this um I am smoking a uh, a, a blend uh, from the Briar Shop called Sunset Rum. I think you may have given me this one too. Mm, possible. Um, and uh, that's what I'm smoking in my pipe right now, and it really connects with this whiskey. The whiskey does have a little bit of that. I know what you're talking about, the younger taste, mm-hmm. but it isn't a negative at all. It just, it's kind of like it just is. Yeah, it's kind of like if you, uh, uh, you know, if you taste a bottle of wine that was from this year's wine uh of, of harvest you know mm-hmm. before it's had a chance to sit and age and mature it's not in any way bad it's just a different taste than what it's going to be after it's settled well, for a this while is what they're producing and there's no age statement on this whatsoever like so i i'm assuming this is bottle number 68 barrel number 3689 mm-hmm. and uh and there's not just there's just not that much information on the bottle itself um it was a great looking bottle, but uh, yeah, there's just not that much information on. It. I, I'd love to see like if if it's this good and it has a little bit of youngness and a flavor. I'd love to see what's going to happen when we give this company seven years. Oh yeah, and this has had time and to. And a lot to, of great yeah. whiskeys are three and five, and six. Well, and you know, a lot of companies when they start their distillery, they'll distill a vodka because you don't have to let it uh, age. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's all right, about right. the filtering and the distilling. And they'll, That's so you can sell something. So you can sell something and try to stay in business yeah. for the first couple of years. They'll distill their own whiskey, which they will then put into barrels and age and begin to sell it in a few years. And then they'll maybe blend some whiskeys 
that are already aged that they can get from other distillers. Sometimes they'll foray that'll the become gin their as well, yeah which doesn't right need to be aged right. Very well. So uh, this here they seem to have been just kind of charging out into the wild unknown and uh, bringing us something that is young, but that despite its youth. Is real. I think this is very drinkable. This is very drinkable. If we were and, sitting at the and bar, it's apparently just, right up the road. I've never even heard of this. If we were sitting at the bar, just ordering a few of the, you know, this is something I could drink for the evening. Yeah. You know, uh, without feeling like I needed to change up, like I was missing out on something. Right. You know, <laughs> uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's delicious. And didn't you say it was not very expensive? Is that what? No, I think Adam said found the that when he looked it up. Under thirty dollars. Under thirty dollars. I'd say this is a steal at that price. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's a nice whiskey at that price. I also wanted to point out, you're, you're uh, smoking what you said, uh, Sunset Rum? Sunset Rum, yes. Uh, the, the, what I'm smoking right now is Peterson Sunset Breeze. Mm, cool. So we're both in the sunset, so to speak. Mm-hmm. What are you smoking over there, Pat? I'm smoking your berry and cream. Oh. Berry, is, is that what Mac- that says? Georgia cream. Georgia cream. Yeah. Georgia. That's what I meant. Georgia mm-hmm. cream, which I think might and be a McBaron that? blend. Oh, it's it's just wonderful. Oh, that's, and it, that's not his fault, by the way. My handwriting. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll show you handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will say Pat's maybe about the worst that I've ever. Yeah, encountered. it's pretty and bad. That's coming from me. So <laughs> let uh, me ask: Are do you ever cover cleaning a pipe on the show? Like, oh, you know I don't know do what mm-hmm. to do. I don't know. When is it like, God, have you not cleaned that pipe? Well, I mean, does it need a cleaning or how do I, you know, soak? so if you smoke your pipe real often, you're going to get, um, you're going to get a buildup around the bowl. Yes. You know what? Are we at time for a break? Mm-hmm. Let's take a break. We'll talk about this beginning right. of the next. When we come back yep. in our final segment, we will be doing a couple of different things. We'll be talking about how to clean a pipe. We will be talking about, um, our next beer, our final beer for the day, which is the pumpkin stout from Wasatch Brewing called Black O' Lantern. So that will be mm. coming up. That's and be good. as if all that weren't enough for a really star studded final segment of the show, we got drinking news coming up. Drinking news. It's smoking and toasting. Cheers, y'all. We'll be right back. Cheers, y'all. Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toast in our final segment on show number 206. Our program is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars, and in today's case, pipes. We are uh, brought to you by MyCigarShirts.com. Great gifts and uh, stuff for yourself if you are a cigar lover. Uh, MyCigarShirts.com because cigars. Shirts start under 20 bucks. It's pretty cool. All right, Ian. I think we know what time it is. Drinking news. Drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. Drinking news. Drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. So gather a cup while we gather round. Saddle up while we drink them down. I've got a story and I swear it's true. So now it's time for drinking news. Drinking Drink news. Drink now it's time for drinking Drink news. Drinking Drink news. Drinking Drink news. Drink now it's time for drinking news. Cheers, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> drinking news is a special segment on the program every week where we bring you a news story that may or may not be about drinking, but is always a story that's probably best enjoyed if you are drinking. And certainly we've been drinking, so we're in a perfect, uh, perfect place to get this started. Uh, by the way, Ian, you remember me telling you about how they target ads? Uh, earlier, and oh, yeah. I got the ad that yeah, said yeah, "Never yeah, clean yeah, a right. toilet again." The one I'm staring at now says, "How to easily clean earwax." And it what are you a, searching that comes know. up with this? I don't know. <laughs> I just, I've got to clear my search history somehow. <laughs> I'm in I'm in terrible trouble. Officials with a Canadian business, as we get to drinking news. So this is not a Florida man, but it's a Canadian business. Officials at this business said they were left surprised, confused, and somewhat amused. When Facebook refused to run an ad for their onions because the ad was flagged as an overtly sexual image. Now, I, uh, uh, it, when we're in the studio, I'll have Adam put up a photo sometimes during Drinking News. And he does have the photo of this to put up, but you won't get to see it in the live feed today because we're out remotely. So it's actually worth 
going to our uh, YouTube uh, video of this once we're posted so you can take a look because that'll be inserted into the program. Jackson McLean, a manager at the Gaze Seed Company, that's G-A-Z-E, Gaze Seed Company in St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador, said the company submitted to ad, submitted an ad to Facebook to promote its Walla Walla onions. But the submitted image... Walla Walla onions? Walla Walla onions. Isn't there a wishy-washy washing machine company from Walla Walla, Washington? <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you? Yeah, can you show that to the? So Adam's just going to show it from his phone to the feed. But there is uh, this is the photo. <laughs> oh man, of the onions. Those are some sexy onions. That was <laughs> rejected by Facebook as being overtly sexual. Can, can I see that? How, how sexy are those onions? Let me just say, I've seen a lot of weird, weird stuff on Facebook. Oh, come but on. I've never been aroused by onions. <laughs> walla Walla Sweet. Uh, McLean said he had to laugh at what was apparently an error uh, by Facebook's anti-nudity algorithm. We got notified the other day that it's an overtly sexual image that they had to ban from the site. He says, I guess something about the two round shapes could be misconstrued as boobs or something, nude in some way. I just thought it was funny. He said, you have to have a pretty active imagination to look at that and get something sexual out of it. Overtly sexual, as in, there's no way of not mistaking it, or there's no way of mistaking it as sexual. Uh, the company appealed the decision, and the Facebook Canada spokesperson did confirm that the ad rejection was an algorithm area. So AI isn't going to take over the world just yet, folks. It's in the back room getting aroused by photos of onions, apparently. <laughs> Uh, we use an automated technology, they said, to keep nudity off our apps. But sometimes it doesn't know a Walla Walla onion from a, well, you know, the <laughs> spokeswoman, Meg Seclair, uh said. We restored the ad and are sorry for the business's trouble. So, How did he get someone on the phone? That, to, yeah, uh, you, you know, that is probably. Have that conversation. Yeah, that yeah. really is. That's, that's just dedication. I'm so frustrated with so many companies that you actually, they don't have a phone number. Yeah. No, no. Like, you got to dig for it. Or, or like, the ones that do. My favorite is, I have a problem with the internet. Go to our website to help you with your problem with the internet. I can't because I have a problem yeah. with my internet. Yeah. Well, look us up on the website. Well, one of, one of my least favorite things in the world is the automated system that forces you to go through all of its options before you can ask to speak to a real person. If you keep hitting zero over and over again... Yeah. Sometimes the system will get fed up and just connect you to somebody. I, believe me, I tried it. I tried it. It works sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. Well, welcome back, folks. It is uh, it is smoking and toasting. Uh, we are ready. I realized I didn't get out uh, the final beer, Ian, so you may have to entertain so folks with the ukulele. Entertain yes. people with the ukulele. Here we go. Oh, hey, let's, let's, let's go. Um... feeling very tropical. I like it. Puts a real tropical spin on that, you know? <laughs> People are like, I tuned in to find out about pipes. What There's is some happening guy on there here? playing the ukulele. Uh, Adam, I'll give you that to show to the camera. This will be our final beer for today. Oh, I've never this seen it in a can. Yeah, what is going on? I've seen it yeah. in a bottle. I've never seen it yeah, in a can. Today's, today's beers are all, can, uh, all cans. This is Black O' Lantern, which is all cans, Wasatch's all Stout. Can we set this over there? I, uh, it's, I've got some. We'll pass it the down. Tables, uh, like I got some yeah. wet over here. Uh, so Ian, while he's showing off the beer and we're getting ready to pour, let's address this question about cleaning your pipes. Let's do that. So uh, pipe cleaning, if if you wouldn't mind, after you light your pipe, uh, you can hold this so I can talk. Uh, so pipe cleaning is usually reasonably simple. I'm gonna steal a couple of your. Uh, Pipe cleaners. Yeah, now, is. pipe cleaners come in two different styles, by the way, three or four, actually, if you really want to subcategorize them. They can be straight, like what you have here. Okay. They can be straight, like what you have here. Sometimes they're tapered, where they're, they're, they're more fuzzy at one end. And these are what I like to call uh, absorby ones. Mm -hmm. So what you have here is uh, just a nice, soft, uh, absorbent uh, pipe uh pipe cleaner and you just run it down all the way till it stops and bring it back out you can also go through through the bowl the bowl oh. if you need to a little bit but usually if you run it from the other end you'll see it come out here and you'll see 
So you get a little bit of uh, uh, discoloration here. They call now, that Louis juice. When your pipe is <laughs> when your pipe is cool and you're not smoking it real hot or anything like that, you can take your pipe apart, and you will get some juice from the tobacco and your uh, and your saliva as well. So sometimes just taking it apart and going, yeah, to get some of that out is helpful. And you can use your you can use your absorby mm -hmm. to get around on there. Now, once in a while, when it gets kind of dirty and you want to clean it out one of the things you can do and this is simply a little bit of whiskey now i'm using whiskey there's oh. all kinds of stuff oh really there's uh beeson's oh. has like a honey uh stuff like this but whiskey's good um anything high alcohol is good because it's going to uh clean out what's in there huh and it's also going to uh dry out fast so you're not leaving a bunch of moisture in there so i'm just running this alcohol swab through my stem right now so you put a little whiskey on the um on the, on the pipe cleaner on the pipe cleaner and then go oh, and okay. you can use whiskey you can use cognac i like you can use uh um uh vodka if you want i'd stick with whiskey it sounds like but it whiskey tastes better match and yeah. cognac tastes better so it's nice yeah. to put a little flavor in there sure so i do that and then when it comes to the stummel, I'll do the same thing. A little whiskey on there. Yeah. Run it into the stummel. Do you drink the whiskey after? Well, so the answer is yes, as long as you don't re-dip your uh, absorby. Oh, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Because in Galveston, because we that wouldn't could do know bad the difference. Things. You know, we'd go, eh, <laughs> Right, so, right. It's okay. So, you know, so you're just basically uh, cleaning out a bunch of the sloppy stuff that happens, your saliva plus the juice from it. And you'll notice I'm using different parts of this because I don't want to get, I don't want to contaminate my whiskey. But the last thing I'll generally do is I'll take a folded piece like this and I'll just oh. kind of run it down along the bottom of my pipe oh. and up along here and just gets out some of the charred stuff. Now... If you have to do a deep cleaning, if you smoke your uh, pipe a lot and you have a huge buildup around the edge of the pipe, then they make tools that will scrape the edge of the pipe out to a certain bore to make sure that um, uh. to make sure that you're not getting too much. Now, if you've ever, if you're a grill guy like I am, you know what happens when you let too much of that. Like I've used my grill for an entire season, and it's all caked up along the sides of it, all the creosote and everything else that happens, and it will catch on fire. Uh-huh. Right. So with your pipe, it doesn't generally catch on fire, but it can clog it up and it can do stuff like that. So you can get a pipe reamer for that. And oh, that will that reamer. will take it back uh -huh. out to this proper size. Now, I don't generally smoke thank you by the way for that. I don't generally smoke any one pipe in a row enough to do that. So it usually takes me uh frankly a couple years to get to a point where I need to put a reamer into my pipe. Um, and that's only on my very favorite ones and seldom, but you get this nice char coating in here after you use it for a while and that helps the burn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's your basics on cleaning a pipe okay. and it's super simple with a little bit of whiskey and if you're careful about your swab, yeah. and you'll notice I used one end, then I used the other, and then I folded it in half and used the middle, so I never uh -huh. re-dipped uh, what Correct. I stuck into the pipe in here, so I can still drink and enjoy this whiskey, which, by the way, is quite good. Yes, it, it, I really have enjoyed this whiskey. Uh, speaking of drinking, uh, Black O Lantern uh, is the Wasatch Brewery's pumpkin stout. It says on the back, tastes like chocolate pumpkin velvety. And I'm reading from the can here. It says, what kind of madman would cross an imperial stout with a pumpkin ale? Our brewers, as it turns out. This rich, chocolatey Franken brew is dry spiced and scary good. Boo. I love the name Franken brew. Franken brew. That should be a, that'd be a good brewery name, wouldn't it? Franken brew. All right. So, not expecting a lot of carbonation here, but we'll see. And not a lot uh, right from the bat. You, we need right one more cup. There we go. I can reuse my uh, cup here. No oh, problem. We got, we got it. All right, so Ian's pouring. The first thing that I uh, find interesting is even though it's called Black O'Lantern, I would actually refer to that color as more of a deep brown uh, than a black, so it's not... Also, it has a little it, more carbonation than I expected. Yeah, I'm uh, surprised by that too, by what I'm seeing so far with the Black O'Lantern. Uh, again, this is Wasatch, 
Uh, and these guys, I love their stuff. Man. Uh, I really do. These are the guys that have the Polygamy Porter, which I think yes. is oh, one of the most creatively yummy. named uh, beers in the world because they are from Salt Lake City, where there's plenty of uh, uh, Mormon families that yes. uh, that may appear to be rather large. Practice the let's big just love, say. as it were. The big love. What a great show that was. Uh, you did know, you ever I never watch watched that show? it. Uh, wow, that was, I, I mean, I saw an episode was, or two, but I never got to see the whole show. It was a fantastic show, and I love it was real good, the yeah. lead actor, Bill, um, I'm thinking Bill Pullman, but it's not, Bill Paxton. Oh, this smells uh, great. May he rest in peace. Ian, oh, this. And I got uh, a little bit of uh, pipe tobacco on my fingers, so it's blending with It's so light. Awesome. Yeah, it, it's, it, it smells a little lighter than you would think. I was expecting that kind of rich imperial stout uh, uh, aroma. And it smells a little lighter than that. Maybe that's this because of the ale. This comes across a lot lighter than a uh, than a big stout. Actually, it has a brighter flavor overall. I think it's got all the body that we expect from that stout. But frankly, I think because of that pumpkin and spice, baking spice that's in there. Wow, that really happens on the aftertaste. Yes, I think it really brightens up the flavor of it and makes it more in the porter category as far yes. as how, how big of the body feels. What I really like about this is they did not overdo the pumpkin. Sometimes when you're drinking pumpkin beers, and I'm sure mm. we'll have a few that are like this as we uh, as we try to add a pumpkin beer to our beer selection uh, every week between now and Thanksgiving, um, sometimes it's like they really want to make sure you know they got the pumpkin flavor. Yeah, this is you not know? pumpkin AF. Exactly. It's definitely not that. But it is a very balanced and tasty brew. Yep. I agreed. love the coffee taste of the Imperial Stout, and it works much better with the pumpkin than you might think. Yep. It. Uh, well, the it pumpkin is a, is, a, is a flavor in there. It's not the predominant hit you over the head flavor. Right, right. Pat, the what nose is, on this is really interesting. What is your what is your take on the? Well, I would buy this. Is, wow, it, is where that's it, pretty big because this is not a man for, who, this who buys a lot of dark beer. Here, not so. my thing, but it is so not heavy. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and um, it's so surprising because it looks like a roast beef sandwich it from is, from here. It is it, very it really, drinkable. It really not. does drink more like a Christmas ale or like a um, like a. Uh, Porter than Interestingly, anything else. it's only six point six six percent alcohol by volume, mm-hmm. which for an imperial stout is low. Yeah, it's not really boozy, but it is very creamy and delicious. Where is this from? This is from Wasatch Ales. They are out of Salt Lake City, Salt Utah. Lake. Oh, right, but right. you can buy this at your local Specs because that's where I bought that one. Uh, good stuff, guys. I'm. Uh, I'm quite impressed with the Black O' Lantern. Yum. And I I will tell you, now I've only tried two tobaccos on today's show. I first had the Aurora, which I really liked. And then I went for some, I think you may have given me both of these, Ian. Went for some of the Sunset Rum, which is what I've been mm-hmm. smoking. And I really, really liked it. Remind me again what you're working on there. So I had the, the at first I tried my Mystery, which I think is Silum's Red mm-hmm. uh, from the taste. Because uh, I, 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 so let me. Show you. I jar these when I know I'm going to have them for a long time. And these, these jars are actually nice and airtight. So this one is just jarred with the name Mystery on it because I had no idea what it was. I think you knocked the camera. It's rocking now. We probably look like... Uh-oh. Like, uh, the There's an the, earthquake happening. It's like the uh, bridge of the Enterprise when the uh, right, proton right. torpedo oh, hits right. and they all lean. So it's... Uh, we just have to have Adam bounce up and down yeah. over there while we do that. Pat started with the accountant and then you switched up. What is the one that you had? Oh, it was the Georgia Cream. Georgia Cream. Uh, and, right. and you like that as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, so, you usually bring one that's from uh, the... Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, well, okay, so you laugh about that, but Walgreens yeah. sells Captain Black White, uh, which is a great tobacco. Huh. If, if you ever find yourself going, hmm, I don't want to go by the uh, shop or it's too late, they're closed or whatever, Captain Black White um, uh-huh. by Borkham Riff. I, no, uh, I think that's by Borkham Riff. Uh, the half and half's by Borkham Riff. Anyway, I, I can't remember exactly all of them, but Captain Black White is an outstanding tobacco. It's been sold for years, and there's a reason it's popular. There's also um, Carter Hall is one of my favorites. You can buy that in a big tub right there at the grocery store. Wow. And it's great tobacco. Now, I will tell you that when you get down to the last quarter of the bowl, you don't want to smoke that because it gets a little bit goopy and it gets a little bit bitter. But if you know you're going to smoke three quarters of a bowl, that's fine. It's great. Right. And, um, and you can get that stuff cheap enough. And you can that get it you cheap can, enough. You, and you can, can throw out it, that last quarter of the bowl. Yeah, yeah it gets, and, and you can get it anywhere, too. So don't, don't 
put your nose up because I I went through the whole snobbery thing. Of, I bought all the yeah, Dan yeah. tobaccos and all the Esoterica tobaccos, and there's some great ones. Like some of my favorites, like this Da Vinci, uh, is a Dan tobacco, and it's absolutely outstanding. The Milongo is a Dan tobacco; it's absolutely outstanding. The uh, Esoterica tobaccos, like uh, uh, like Penzance, uh, unbelievable, hard to find but unbelievable. Uh, that's much like in the in the liquor world, the allocated. Uh, oh, stuff yeah. that's very much like that and Stonehaven and Peacehaven those are all esoteric ones and there's some great tobaccos like that they're, they're amazing but the truth is you can get a great tobacco at your local grocery store uh-huh. yeah. this is not the case by the way with cigars not you, always no you, you probably cannot uh-huh. buy at your local Walgreens you, a cigar that's worth smoking depending don't, on your don't Walgreens worry though. about white owls and all of that stuff. right right so that's true and depending on your Walgreens though I will tell you that you can go in and I've seen in some Walgreens the little zip pack uh-huh. with a little uh, Bovita style thing in there okay that might be of worth punch something. okay there you go yeah. you know and they're not going to be the high, higher end punches but it comes with it's a little zip pack with like three punches and those are okay one. yeah th- and those that's are fine. worth smoking yeah absolutely you know? And I'll be honest with you. I did a review one time of the uh, Black and Mild. Yeah. With a plastic tip on it. You know what? I was sitting around playing Cards Against Humanity with friends. I had a blast while I smoked it. And it's it's like uh, the Black and Mild is pretty much half pipe tobacco. And it's fine. You know, it's cheap mm-hmm. as dirt. And it's fine, you know. Highest rating you've ever given a cigar it, it on the show. got a nine. On a price to because quality. Because it costs because less it costs than, less than a dollar. dollar. Yes, wow. exactly. Uh, so, well, uh, this has been a fun show. I always enjoy visiting the new potato. We want to say big thanks to Paul for also awesome. uh, letting us have a, uh, a corner of his uh, table here this afternoon. Whenever we do this, he has to come out early because they're not open yet. Yeah, they don't open until so, 5. Yeah, so, so he, he comes out, out and opens it up for us, and he comes out at noon so we can get our stuff set up. Yeah, and So we can be on crisply at one o three and a half. Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, Paul's just one of those guys, you know, uh, he's one of those people that when you hear somebody say, he's a good dude. Paul's that guy. Oh, He's we were, a good dude. We were waiting here today, and a guy pulls up over there on the other side of uh, our vehicles, and he's just doing something. I don't even know what he's doing. And Paul walks out and sees the guy. He's like, I don't know what's going on over there. Maybe he has a flat or something. This guy pulls in with his car, has a flat. He walks over here, and in his uh, fine English accent, he goes, could one of you big strapping guys give me a hand? I can't get my tire loose. And Paul looks at him in his Irish accent and goes, are you English? The guy goes, yes. He goes, then I can't help you. <laughs> and then he laughs about it. And then he walks over there and, 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 and the guy completely, the tire. you know, he had a four way, which made it way easier and completely helped him change the tire and get on down the road. And they had a great conversation. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's Paul. That yeah, is 100% yeah. Paul. Well, he w- runs a great, uh, a great place here. Uh, love coming here. Even when we're not doing the show and just hanging out and great selection, always good beers on tap. Yes, and, and he's uh, also advocate. He advocates a lot of the locals, man. So the local beers. I had the St. Arnold uh, as the show beer today, uh, but this giant whiskey, which is right up the road. Mm-hmm. He said these guys hang out here all the time. Try the whiskey. I love it. Yeah, and it's you know awesome. the, the uh, be. beer truck delivery truck showed up, mm-hmm. and they were offloading a ton of product <laughs> right here <laughs> yep. to the new. And I was thinking. Man, does he sell that much beer? Or drinks it. He, he may drink a lot some, of that beer. So. He's going through a, quite a stock. <laughs> well, I don't know if you looked across the street, but that's a drive-in theater over across uh-huh. the street, and he supplies beer for them on uh, weekends. Oh, Fantastic. We're going well, to see Beetlejuice on uh, Saturday that night. That sounds my wife. so much fun. Say it real fast three times. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Not bad. Thank you to uh, Adam for coming out and getting us set up here. Uh, I believe that on next week's show, we are going to be spotlighting a new or new to us uh, brewery. I just want to look back at my text and make sure that this is in fact confirmed. Uh, yes, Michael with True Anomaly Brewing will be joining us uh, next week. True Anomaly is one of the breweries participating in the Great American Beer Fest awesome. virtual thing. So Michael will be joining us for that. Uh, also, uh, we are going to be visiting i think if all goes the way i am hoping oh fingers are crossed we are going to be visiting doxyland 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 
It's where Dox right. lives and right. has all of Doc his, uh, yeah, oh, and has all of so his uh, his uh, rums stored, he's, yeah, he's and has a nice show. outdoor smoking area, and he's one of our favorite guests on the also, show. Also, we so. got news today. Emperor's Cut has a new cigar out. We're gonna try to get them on the show pretty quick. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Those guys were great hosts to us, yeah, and uh, so fun. and make some great cigars. And so, a lot of great things coming up in the next few weeks here on Smoking and Toasting. Thank you for joining us. Thanks to Pat Fant for coming and smoking pipes with us today. You rock, Pat. and uh, we always have a good time, and we appreciate you most of all uh, for making us one of the shows that one you of the can watch shows that happens. yes yeah. thank you folks enjoy your pipe smoking this week and uh, as we like to say here on smoking and toasting cheers, cheers y'all. Y'all.